Hi, I'm Alison Victor for Foodie TV. And today we're going to talk about local food and wine. Now, I'm very passionate about my local food, about the flavors, the spices, the herbs. But matching it with wine, I'm not too sure. But David Coleman is here from the Asia Wine Society to kind of talk us through it and help me out a little. Help me understand, how is that going to work, David? Well, actually, I think uh, for wine really to be accepted in Asia, we've got to match it in with local foods. And there's a lot of myths that go around with what can and cannot happen with uh, wine and food. So I think today we've got a, a great array of food in front of us here. I reckon we can bust a few of them. Yes, in front of us, definitely all the all-time favourites. We've got a plate of chakwitao, which we're going to start with first. And in this dish, the flavours of chilli, of the wok, of the fresh clams, the cockles, the prawns, you know, it's savoury, it's slightly sweet, it's spicy. How are okay. you going to match a wine to that? I'm well, I'd ask you, not give sure. me the top three flavours you would associate with this dish. Top three flavours. Spicy, salty and crunchy. Not That's not a flavour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, texture, no, texture is really important <laughs> when it comes to wine, so I'm, I'm happy with that. I'll work with that. I think what we'll do is we'll look at uh, the saltiness and the chilli first. Okay. And I'm going to match this in with an, an age-old favourite. Now, I grew up with this being called uh, white burgundy. But actually, uh, it's now uh, just a dry white from Margaret River. And uh, it's Chardonnay-based. Chardonnay loves saltiness in food. And because we've got no oak influence on this particular wine, we're not going to run into any trouble with the chilli. Oak and chilli, they have a bit of a love-hate relationship, so you've got to be a bit mm. careful. So with this particular wine, give it a bit of a swirl again so we get some flavours going out of it. Great fruit-driven wine. Mm -hmm. It's got some really nice lime flavours in there, which is a Chardonnay. It smells very fresh. Yeah, it's very mm -hmm. fresh, very clean. It's that perfect summer day kind of thing. So what we want to do here is actually taste the food first okay. and uh, get an association of where the food's at. Like, what I want your palate to do is go, okay, salty, yeah, get the chilli coming through. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's salt straight up. We taste salt actually at the front of our palate, so and it doesn't... the chilli comes through a little later. A little later, yeah. yeah, which is not surprising. So now we've got those flavours. Let's have a go with the wine. Interesting. It actually just recreated what was going on, but with different flavours. The, the salt was still up front, mm. but now mm. I've got a longer chilli uh, development than what I had when I just had the food. But what's the difference of drinking wine instead of your normal lime juice or tetare or something that we're used to? Yeah, that's a really good point. This actually has a bit of lime in it. I don't know if you noticed when you tasted mm -hmm. it, that lime was definitely there. But what we're actually trying to do is take the flavours of the food flavours of the wine, bring them together and create a third flavour. The reason behind that is if we just kept eating, we would do exactly that. We would just be eating because our nose would lose the ability to taste this food. So after about the second or third mouthful, all the flavour's gone mm. and we're just eating it for the sake of eating. Well, I'm going to give you a real challenge next because, <laughs> okay, chocolate is fine, it's just one dish. We've got chicken rice next, and this is a lot of different flavours, a lot of different stuff. We've got rice, we've got soup, we've got the steamed chicken, we've got the savouriness from the soya sauce, we've got the crunchy onions, fried onions and the crunchy bean sprouts, we've got the chilli, and we've also got the sweet pineapple in chilli. Ah, uh, let's see what you can do with that. <laughs> Kaleidoscope of flavours here. Yes. Um, well, looking at this straight away, I can just see so many different combinations here mm. of where as a consumer, I could eat this in, I don't know, probably 50 different ways if I really put my mind to it. So what I'm going to look at doing is go to both extremes. Mm -hmm. Let's just do one where we're really chilli based okay. and one where we're probably more of the dark soy based. Okay. And then people can make their decisions up from there. So I'm going to start with what I think is so it's missed. It's pink. <laughs> it's pink, I know, <laughs> I know. But pink is a, it's a colour, not a lifestyle. That's what I'd say straight up. Uh, this will go well with the girls, I can assure you. <laughs> well, the boys shouldn't be afraid of it either because I think rosé is really missed in Singapore. Mm -hmm. It's all the benefits of red with all the benefits of white. It's a hot environment we live in here. It's lovely and aromatic. 
it goes with so many different dishes, it's outrageous. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it just tends to get shunned in this part of the world. Well, let's see how it does with the chicken rice. Right, well, let's have a look at the wine to start with. Okay. So based off Cabernet Franc, it's a savoury style of, uh, of rosé. It doesn't have the sweetness in it that a lot of rosés do. Mm -hmm. So the fruit flavours are quite red. A bit of yep. red cherry coming through, even a little bit of strawberry there. So very aromatic in itself. Ooh. Nice dry finish, so okay. definitely no, no lingering sweetness. Should we try it with the rice? A little bit of the sauce? I think that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. So let's do that. Let's get some rice in there. Because the rice has soaked up all that lovely chicken broth anyway when they cook it, you know, so... Yeah, it was quite, quite an entertaining sort of uh, process going through seeing chicken rice done for the first time. I didn't realise how complex it was. It is. And that's why it tastes so good. That's <laughs> why we love it so much. So you want a little bit of soy sauce? A little bit of soy, because let's go Just for a combination a here. Yeah, let's go for that. Okay, and, and I wanna more go chilli. I want to go large with the chilli. You all can right. even throw a bit of chilli on there if you want it. Mm -hmm. So I like, I like a lot of chilli on that. So wine is going to complement chilli? I mean, I don't quite understand how that works. Does it complement it? Does it dull it? Does it... What we're actually looking for in this particular instance is to, is to complement mm -hmm. and actually to highlight. We want the chilli to really show up in this because okay. we like our chilli because we're going larger with the chilli than yes, we, are we are with the soy. Okay, let's have a go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be cheeky here and throw a little bit of chicken, chicken on there as well. Okie dokie. Ah. Let's go. Let's go. Chili, heavy on the chili. Heavy on it the chili. Good. <laughs> mm. That is a great example of how rose reacts and adapts to food. Yes, definitely. It's made the, the what was it, quite an aromatic wine to start with even more intense. Mm -hmm. It's uh, really lifted those fruit flavors up. Chili, seamless. Um, okay. Well, let's try it with the soy sauce and see. How that I agree. Goes. I'm still bordering. Oh, you're, you're skeptical. I'm thinking tetare, you know. <laughs> you're, you're a hard customer, but uh, actually, I really quite enjoyed that as a flavour match. It is. Um, so what I want to do now, mm -hmm. I want to look at the darker flavours okay. of this particular dish. So let's go a little bit more with the soy. While you're doing that, I'm going to go for a bit of an all-time favourite, Pinot Noir. Okay. Pinot's enjoying a little bit of a renaissance in Asia. It's certainly the, the hot new variety. Everyone's discovering the joys of Pinot Noir. Why is that? Well, because it's such a, a versatile variety when it comes to the local foods. Mm -hmm. It's not too dominating on the palate. It's not a heavy wine by any stretch of the imagination. Okay. It's not, not the Bordeaux's of the world. And uh, because of that, it just goes with so many of the Asian dishes. Now, all these great dishes were developed over a long time in, in a warm environment, so it's no surprising yes. you know, that, uh, that they work so well with those more aromatic wines. Oh. Do you need a hand there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Showing my lack of chopstick skill here. There, there you go. we go. So all again, right. darker flavours predominant. I'm going to still go with a little bit of chilli because okay. I'm enjoying that. Mm -hmm. Now it's important why the food's still on the palate. It really tastes, the soy sauce is very thick, it's very heavy. Mm. Interesting. The soy really pulls that plum mm -hmm. out of the actual wine. Dark cherry and plum for me there. It's surprisingly light, I think, which for red, so it really brings out the flavour for mm. me. I find I prefer it to the rosé. Actually, did mm -hmm. you? Yeah, yes, good. I did. Um, I, I like both for different mm -hmm. reasons, um, but I just think rosé and Pinot Noir have a great future here in, in Asia. Looking at dishes like this, um, you know, the compounds that we're looking at here are quite common mm -hmm. through many different dishes, so lots okay. to be had. Let's move on to our next dish. This one is going to be a real challenge for you. I mean, chicken <laughs> rice, oh, that's going to be easy. We've got curry laksa. Now this is a very, very rich, coconutty, spicy broth. And we've got all kinds of different ingredients in here. We've got some deep fried turnip. We've got that's you know, gonna be sweet. We've got uh, fish cake. We've got 
cockles as well. We've got the yellow noodle, springy textures, lots of bounce in there. <laughs> well, the first thing is just the, the aromas coming off this. This is screaming out of the bowl. Mm -hmm. like you, from even over here, I can really smell it. So straight away, I've got to start thinking aromatic wine. And okay. I've got to start thinking the tradition of Alsace. So my, my particular grape varieties are more likely to be Gewürztraminer or Pinot Gris mm -hmm. uh, as, as two absolute standouts and, and Riesling as well. I'm just going to have a cheeky yes, taste have by a taste. Uh, some of this broth. How is it? Coconut, Coconut up front <laughs> and a lot of chilli at the back. <laughs> mm. oh. It's also got lots of undertones of, of seafood because I'm, I'm guessing they've used a, a prawn or a seafood based stock. So mm. Definitely. But that chilli right at the Oh, it's just developing even further. Mm -hmm. Now, Yum. when you discover a dish like this that maybe might be even a little bit too much chilli for some people, yeah. uh, there's only two things that will really control that chilli burn. Uh, one is milk mm -hmm. and the other is sugar. Okay. Now, at the risk of looking like an absolute sissy and having a tall glass of milk with dinner, we can actually use the natural sugars in wine to do exactly that, control the flavour. And my personal favourite when it comes to laksa is Gewürztraminer. You'll see why when you have a little bit of a smell of this wine. So in this case, unlike with the chicken where you wanted to bring out the flavour of the chilli, you're using this wine to actually make it more edible, get yeah. rid of the spiciness, but still retain all the flavour of the dish. I'm trying to dull the heat and continue the flavour, because I actually quite like that flavour of chilli. It's mm. just probably a little bit too much for my palate. I can't quite handle it okay. as well as some. So this particular wine, what I love about it, it's got the flavours of Asia in there. One of the first things that jumps out of here, let's see if you get it. Fruity. Fruity? It smells fruity, yeah. Yeah, really nice mm. lychee coming out of it. And it's, I think the lychee in Gewürztraminer is such a great connector for so many new drinkers in Asia. It's a flavour they can relate to. Mm -hmm. Some nice rose water as well and Turkish delight. All quite sweet. It is quite sweet, actually. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it's already reacting with that little bit of yes, taste that I had before. So let's give it a full chance here to, to do its thing. I'm going to get plenty of broth in there, so if I react to it, we'll see. And uh, Get a bit of the cockles yeah, in there. Yeah, some cockles as well. Look at that. That's very nice. They're called kurang. Kurang? Yes. Oh, OK. That's the local name for them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice bit of splash. <laughs> It's, it's, it's uh, all, we do it all for good food and good wine. <laughs> it's, it's exactly right. It's, uh, as my uh, mother said, don't play with your food, but I love about Asian food is we get to do exactly that. Mm. You're right. The now, spice has been dulled down a little and I, I definitely taste the coconut more in the front. Mm. So again, going back to that food, wine, third flavour is the combination of the two. Great, uh, great length on the palate there. So I'm tasting the chilli now, rather than sitting there breaking out in a, in a sweat. I'm really enjoying the way that, uh, that chilli is developing. Well, David, I'm on my way to being convinced. If you want to find out more, click on the bottom right hand corner for a food matching guide. If you would like to buy a bottle, click on the top right hand corner. And of course, if you would like to Enroll in a wine tasting course, click on the top left corner of the screen. I'm Alison Victor for Foodie TV.